Frances McDormand was born in 1957 in Chicago, but she was raised in Pittsburgh by her adoptive parents, a Canadian minister and his wife. It was actually her English teacher that noticed her interest in Shakespeare and encouraged her to take part in school theatre productions. She then went on to study theatre at both Bethany College and Yale. She's a highly respected and acclaimed actress and has received four Academy Award nominations. She's fantastic. Just because um, it's completely committed and completely there. And also brilliantly technical, but that's all thrown away. That's part of it, but it's disguised in, the, in this connection that she makes. After completing her studies, she moved to New York to begin her acting career. This is where she made a lifelong friend, sharing an apartment in the Bronx with a fellow up-and-coming actor named Holly Hunter. McDormand was making good inroads, working in several plays, but it was the opportunity to be part of the first ever feature film made by a couple of brothers named Joel and Ethan that would have a major impact on the rest of her life. The pair were the Coen brothers, and it was a turn of fate that saw Frances audition. Holly Hunter was originally cast in the role, but after she had a scheduling conflict, she suggested the Cohen brothers see her roommate for the part. She's perfect. Um, she's very, <clears throat> she's this very down to earth lady, and you know uh, has a gritty quality and um, a vulnerability as well. She has all those sides of her, and she's very loving. Frances is very loving and very concerned about everybody. Not only did she score her first movie, she also found love. McDormand started a relationship with director Joel Cohen and the two married that same year. Well, that's how we met. We met on Blood Simple 15 years ago in the audition. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of been a part of our relationship the whole time. Not only did she make her feature film debut and find love, but she also started a professional relationship that's seen her team up with the Cohen brothers in six films. She's appeared in Miller's Crossing and Raising Arizona, had a voice only part in Fink, and she's had lead roles in Blood Simple, The Man Who Wasn't There, Burn After Reading, and of course in Fargo, which she won an Oscar for. Um, really, I've been having a blast working with her. And I just love her too, because she's just, you know, she's the one who makes you lists. She makes lists all the time. What's a good restaurant to go to in New York? Here's a list. Um, and she's fantastic. McDormand has stated that she doesn't need awards to fuel her ego or self-esteem, because she's already proud of her achievements. The fact is that many of her performances have been worthy of awards. She's been nominated for Tonys, Emmys, BAFTAs, Screen Actors Guild Awards, Golden Globes and Oscars. McDormand remained virtually unknown until she earned an Academy Award nomination in 1988 for playing a meek southern woman abused by her Klansman husband in Mississippi Burning. Her scenes with Gene Hackman were a stunning tutorial on how to express emotion without words. In 1990, she played an American human rights activist in Hidden Agenda, a political thriller set in Northern Ireland. The British director was so impressed with her, he said, not only have you changed my opinion of actors, you've changed my opinion of Americans. You know, I like working with directors that know how to make movies. I've been really lucky. Most of the ones that I've worked with really know how to make movies. McDormand's also had her fair share of failure, mainly with failed comedies like The Butcher's Wife and Passed Away. Roles she said she took to prove that she could be funny. But she was finally back in form with the comedy heist, Palookaville, playing an alcoholic hooker. She certainly has played a plethora of characters. A football crazed divorcee in Lone Star. A psychiatrist interviewing a potential killer in Primal Fear. But it was her role as a pregnant small town deputy sheriff on the trail of murderers of a highway patrolman in Fargo that won her her top prize. The film was directed by the Coen brothers and she wasn't initially that wrapped with her role. When I first read the script, Joel and Ethan wrote the part for me. Um, when I first read the script, it was kind of beyond me why I had to be Marge. You know, it's, uh, I think because of my background, I'm from the Midwest, uh, I've waddled all my life. So there were, there were things that were the, I wanted to do something the farthest from me, not, not something that was maybe a part of my existence. I wanted to play a psycho killer or a prostitute, give me something me. So when I saw Marge, it was kind of like, why guys? Why, why is this the challenge? And then when we started working on it, I realized that it was one of the best gifts that I've ever been given, and all, the only two people that knew that I could do it were them. And that's what Frances does. She brings out 
extraordinary moments in every single scene, every single sentence. The Minnesotan dialect was like a musical score in the script. Every single ya was in there, every single you betcha, because that was the music they remembered from their childhood. What was really great is that we, we were surrounded not only by our friends that worked on Fargo, but also Billy Bob and, and uh, Holly, who's a friend. We were all amongst friends, so that was kind of nice. We all were hooping and hollering. In the noughties, she continued to impress. Although Laurel Canyon wasn't particularly well received, McDormand's performance stood out. She also put in a strong but small performance as Diane Keaton's Tell It Like It Is sister in Something's Gotta Give. With North Country, McDormand earned a nomination for Best Supporting Actress from the Academy, the Golden Globes, the Screen Actors Guild and the British Academy of Film and Television. Franny is the best. It's, uh, you know, what she did in North Country was, I thought, was just amazing. And um, every time you see, you see her, you just she's she, she's a brilliant actress. But to work with her is uh, it was it was it was cool. It was very cool. In the same year, McDormand had all those amazing nominations. She almost had a shocker. She was on the short list to be nominated for Worst Supporting Actress at the Razzies for Eon Flux. Now, if she did get the nomination, she would have been one of the few actresses to be nominated for both Best Supporting Actress at the Oscars and Worst Supporting Actress at the Razzies in the same year. Eon Flux aside, by this stage, Frances McDormand had well and truly cemented herself as a gifted actress in both comedy and drama and a favourite of both fans and critics. I'm here for two reasons. I'm here because of Nikki Caro, who I think is a very, very smart woman and a very accomplished filmmaker. And because when I met her, she gave me a picture of this truck. And I said, oh, that's good. I'm gonna have to think about it now. To put that character in the hands of somebody like Frances McDormand made me feel incredibly safe because I knew she would go there. I knew she would really force herself to really consider what that was. Okay, so the simulator, I'm, I, thankfully, I'm not gonna have to drive on any terrain that was simulated in the simulator. Because when Wayne cranked it up and gave me the rocky road that they sometimes have to be on, I became completely nauseous. I, I turned green. You might have it captured on film, me turning green. I was, I was almost gonna toss my cookies. But I never felt that way in this. I have felt adrenaline rushes and I felt the little prickly, um, you know, sweat break out right here when, I, you know, I got a little nervous, but never the nausea I felt in the simulator. I think they do that on purpose. McDormand continued to attack a wide variety of choices. Next, she got involved with an ensemble drama, Friends With Money, playing an unhappy wife. Then she got into costume for the period comedy Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. Then the band got back together. She teamed up with the Coen brothers for Burn After Reading, a slapstick comedy with a huge cast that included John Malkovich, Brad Pitt and George Clooney. And she couldn't speak highly enough about her fellow castmates. I'm very happy to say that not only are they gracious gentlemen, they are also both totally absurdly dorks their fans would be very unhappy with just how dork-like they are. She's such a professional, but everything comes from uh, a sense of uh, authenticity. She's very authentic. And, and uh, I knew that she was playing Guinevere when I read the script, so I never for me, it was, it was always her, and when I read it, it was perfect. And, and you know, I, I really thought that what, what we could do together would be really fun and really interesting, and, and I was excited. I was really excited at that possibility. I think Frances herself is a really good observer. I think she watches things really closely, and I think that's who Miss Pettigrew is. She spends the majority of the movie just watching what happens, watching, and then she gets pulled into participating. You know, she gets pulled into you know, actually having feelings for a man and actually you know, getting really involved in this young woman's life. She's a watcher who all of a sudden finds herself a doer. And um, I think Fran's got a really, she, she's so, she just doesn't miss a beat. She sees everything. So that's one reason I think she's really good to play the part. And she's funny. She's got really good comic sense. She's one of the best actors in the world, you know, if not the best. Uh, having just spent seven weeks shooting with her, I mean, 
really I, I rate her so highly and, and basically what she does is brings an honesty and truth to it which takes the film to another level really. Now the opportunity to play a part in The Simpsons doesn't go to just anyone. In fact I think it's got to be one of the biggest honours an actor can receive. Well, in 2006, that honour went to Frances McDormand when she voiced the role of Principal Melanie Upfoot in the Simpsons episode, Girls Just Wanna Have Sums. I didn't know she was funny or was a humorous character until I went to the first screening of the movie with an audience. I never tried to play her as a comedic character. I always tried to play her as, as, as believably as possible. Frances McDormand is not only an exceptionally versatile actress, but also one that constantly searches out new challenges. An incredible listener and observer, she finds great little things in the lines of a script that bring out a greater depth to her scenes on the screen. Her talents have been recognised by the Academy with four Oscar nominations for Mississippi Burning, Almost Famous, North Country, and of course she won the Oscar for Fargo. Something she possesses above many other actors is this ability to create a character and then completely transform into her. She's given us some amazing performances over the years and I'm sure will continue to do so. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's altogether better on screen and at mnc.tv.